But I'm everything with you Lord, it's you That made a difference in me Yeah, you did Kiss me Down on my knees oh. Ask God Believe me Dear God Take advantage of me There's no greater feeling Than knowing you I feel free And I thank God For the joy in me I got the victory Welcome to another episode of Pocket Pods. It's me, your pocket pastor. Um, I'm so glad you guys decided to tune in again. Um, if you haven't checked out my first episode, I definitely encourage you to go do that. That way you could know what Pocket Pods is about, what the mission statement is, you know, where this thing is going to go. You could find out who I am, the pocket pastor. You could find out why I got that name. And you could also just hear about my testimony in depth. And to be completely honest with you, this is probably the deepest that I've ever gone into my testimony. Um, I don't think I left any stone unturned. So I encourage you to go check that out. Um, Also, just want to let you know where to find me. So you could find me on YouTube. You could find me on Spotify. You could find me on Apple Podcasts. If you're looking for more of the day to day, like the reels and the shorts, you could find me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is pocketpods underscore IG. You could also find me on TikTok, um, which is pocket underscore pods. Just remember that it's spelled with a Z at the end of pods. So you could find me on both of those platforms, Instagram and TikTok, if you're just looking for some you know, daily content, some shorts, some reels. Also, you can check out, you know, how this thing started, um, you know, with those shorts and reels as the Holy Spirit was just giving me content. Um, Tuesdays and Thursdays had a loss of train of thought there. Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm doing live prayer sessions. So live prayer sessions. So when you do you know, subscribe or follow my pages, just make sure you turn on your notifications. That way, you know, when these live prayer sessions are happening, because right now I'm, they're just happening and popping up wherever. So Tuesdays and Thursdays for right now, I'm hosting those live sessions on Instagram. Once I start building up my YouTube page a little bit more, I'll be hosting those live prayer sessions on that platform as well. So Tuesdays and Thursdays, live prayer sessions. I encourage you, you know, to um, to come on. You know, it's going to be a great time of prayer. Um, the Holy Spirit gives me topics sometimes. But also, if you have any prayer requests or anything that you want to add, you know, again, however the Holy Spirit moves, I'm going to be obedient and let him move. I just want to take a litmus test, if you will, and, and let me know how you felt about that opening intro. Um, that is a song that was produced by my cousin, Big Fabe, for Rice and Beans Productions. He made that song many years ago. And um, I believe somebody had found it on his SoundCloud page. And this gentleman, this man of God, had freestyled a whole song just praising the Lord over that beat. And um, it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. And it's amazing how that all those years ago, when I was unsaved, that that song has followed me up to this point and now being shared on this podcast. Also, just another plug here. Let me know what you think of this shirt. If you're you know, listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you're just going to have to come over to YouTube and check it out real quick. So this shirt was made by Ruach Elohim, which means the breath of God in Hebrew. And what it says across the front, it says, inhabit eternity. And I just love this shirt. Like this shirt, it it embodies not only 
Old Testament but New Testament and I can't really explain why I feel that way it's maybe the Hebrew lettering but it's also the feel of the the, the quality of the shirt um, also the packaging the way it was all put together so go check them out Ruach Elohim um, the breath of God inhabit eternity you know do all the things that God commands amen so um, we're gonna get into this second episode this episode is called Keystrokes of a Piano. Now, when you press any key on a piano, it will always strike that string with the right amount of force and play that note perfectly every time. This will happen whether you tap that key hard or tap that key soft. And that you know that that tapping is done by a hammer and the hammer has anywhere between 9 to 18 parts and it's amazing how th that there's that many parts just to play one note and there's also three pedals on the bottom of the piano i didn't know this before until now what those pedals do but those three pedals determine whether the notes are going to be quiet sustained muffled and um any combination of you know hitting those keys and you know holding down those pedals um, that hammer will always strike that string perfectly every time now you can pluck that string with your finger you can tap it with let's say a drumstick or a pencil um, or even you know hit it with a small hammer but that note is never going to be number one consistent and number two, it's just not going to sound good either. And it's probably going to make any pianist, any musician just cringe if you decide to do any one of those three. And this is just an example of what it is, what life is like when we try to do it without God. Like he, God has all the things in place. But yet we choose to do it our own way. You know, we think we have the right plan. We think we have it set up the right way. We, you know, we've planned it out, mapped it out, even consulted with others. But, you know, without God, like that, that plan, that goal may be achieved, but it's not going to have that same anointing. It's not going to have, you know, the hand of God. And what ends up happening is that, you know, an opportunity may be missed. Um... And, you know, again, even if you accomplish the task, it, it doesn't have that excellence. Like if you were to do it with God, like if you were to partner with him. And I hope that makes sense. And, um, you know, just just like a piano needs a pianist, God needs us to partner with him. And I'm going to just take a moment to just park on that because it's amazing that the God that created the heavens and the earth, the God that formed us by hand, you know, he took six days to create everything you see around you, trees, sky, birds, land, all these things, oceans. And he took nine months to intricately weave each and every one of us together. You know, he knows, you know, our skin color and, you know, how those, how those, um, those blood vessels and, and those blood cells are going to flow together and what, what the heart is going to look like and the nerve endings and, and everything. He weaves all of this, including himself, into our DNA. And it's crazy that, again, that he just wants to partner with us. And what he really wants us to do in this world that we're just, you know, it's all about hustle and bustle and, and running at, you know, a thousand miles an hour you know, maybe where you are, maybe it's a little bit different, but I know for me and, you know, for many here on the, you know, in the Northeast, um, it's all about, you know, moving, 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 moving. Everything's a rush. And um, what God wants us to do is God wants us to just sit down in front of him and just and just sit there, sit there in awe of his magnificence. And that's before we even you know, open our mouth, that's before we even begin to, you know, to play this piano, to play that first note. He just wants us to sit there and just, and just look at 
you know, everything that he is and feel his presence. Just like, you know, when you, when you're, you know, when you're playing this piano and sitting down for the first time, you're in complete awe because you're sitting in, in front of this, this big, you know, ginormous piece of musical <laughs> instrument, um, for lack of a, you know, the better words, but you know, you're just sitting in awe. like this thing is ginormous. And how, how am I going to play this thing? And, um, you know, that again, that's what God wants us to do. So, you know, the first time we sit down, you know, we may we may fumble through a few notes that, you know, we may have heard or maybe, you know, we have learned from, you know, from going to our, our, our lessons with a music teacher. Um, and, you know, we may even be able to put together a, a melody or two. But, you know, this is, you know, kind of like, like the way we begin our prayer life. Like when we first become saved and we first, you know, actually want to spend time with God and we first learn how to pray, like we're fumbling, like we're just trying to put all the words together. You know, we're trying to, you know, maybe throw some scripture in there. We don't know how to open the prayer. We don't know how to, you know, what to put in the middle of the prayer. We don't know when to close out the prayer. Um, and it's all over. And we all have gone through it. Nobody, you know, just opens up their mouth and has, you know, an amazing prayer. Like everybody's just kind of trying to figure it out. And, and this is okay because we, you know, we serve a God that has just so much mercy and so much grace that even through our fumblings, you know, the glory still goes to him. He still is, you know, up there smiling down on us and, you know, with, with joy saying, look, look at my child, look how he's, he's, you know, he's putting an effort in, um, or she's putting an effort in to, to, to just pray to me and connect with me. And, um, you know, over time, you know, once we start getting more used to praying, you know, and we start um, getting into more of a rhythm, you know, we start becoming obedient to our calling, to our calling of having an active prayer life. And those simple melodies, those, you know, those fumblings that had turned into melodies now, you know, they're starting to have harmonies and rhythms and textures. So now, you know, we're getting better with our prayer life. You know, we're, we're in our prayer closet on a, on a daily basis. You know, we're, we're in our prayer closet, you know, completely losing track of time um, at, at certain moments, you know, when the Holy Spirit just gets really stirred and fired up. And next thing you know, you went in, attempt, you know, attempting to have like a 20 minute prayer session. And next thing you know, it's an hour and 20 minutes. And that's also the beauty of God, because you just never know what to expect from him. Um, and, you know, it's it's again, just how much he loves us, that he wants to spend that much time with us. And, you know, we should also want to spend that much time with him. So getting, you know, getting through those, you know, those those melodies and harmonies and rhythms, you know, this this happens when we turn that simple prayer time into a place of, of secrecy. They, they call it the secret place. And, you know, this is a place where you go and you just completely unpack everything that's on you. Um, you know, whether good, bad, and different, you know, this is, again, you, you bring what you have as, as your offering, you bring it, what you have as your sacrifice to, to the feet and to the throne of, of God. And you just let it all out. And, um, this is a place of prayer, meditation, you know, studying your scripture and also becoming sensitive to his whispers. It's important that, you know, that it's just when we have our time of prayer, that it's not just a monologue. Like we're just not saying, OK, God, I need you to do X, Y, Z. God, help me with, you know, one, two, three. And then we say amen and we leave. Sometimes, sometimes God might have his answer already waiting for you but we just have to take that time to sit down and listen and you know just listen for his whispers i promise you we serve a god that actually talks back and when when you start again practicing you know being in your secret space practicing just quieting your mind it will be undeniable that communication that you have with him. You won't doubt it. If you doubt it, you know, you need to tap in a little deeper because as for me, 
when I hear his voice, I know it's his voice. And there's scripture that says, you know, my sheep will know my name. And this is so true. Um, and, you know, again, this is just beautiful because now those small beginnings, those small fumblings of those keys have now turned into a beautiful composition of music. And this composition is just, it just brings, you know, it brings God, it brings Jesus, it brings the Holy Spirit so much joy. It, it, it's literally music to his ears that, you know, that we're praying in such a manner that we're glorifying him, that we're, that we're confiding in him, that, you know, that we're leaning on him and, and not our own understanding. And this is, you know, again, this is so important. Like a prayer life is, is literally everything when it comes to following God and, and, and becoming more like Jesus. And in um, Philippians 2.13, it says, for it is good, for it is, excuse me, for it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. So, you know, that that's what it is. Like, you know, God instills these things in us to bless us, but also bless him. Like, that is just crazy. Like, when you try to wrap your mind around it, like, God, you what what i do is blessing you little old me little old me that sometimes you know i get up in the morning i'm in a rush and i can't find my phone and i can't find my car keys little old me you know the things that i do when i communicate and tap in with you bring you pleasure and bring you joy and again it just it warms my heart like when when you really sit down and think about it um, you know, about having that relationship with God. So, you know, again, this is just, you know, the first analogy, like, of, you know, how God wants to partner with us, we, us being the piano player and him being the piano, because he's, he's magnificent. He has, you know, he's ginormous. He has all these parts and, you know, he wants to partner with us and, and, and get these things out. But, you know, he doesn't want to do it alone, even though he can, I mean, he's God, right? But he does want to partner with us. And, you know, we both need each other. Like, we can't make that beautiful sound without him. We can't make it without the keys and the hammers and all the parts. And he can't make that music, that specific music, that unique and original music without us. Because we're his original masterpiece. We're his original piece. Um, but I'm going to flip this on its head. And what I mean by that is, you know... This is one sided, so it kind of seems like, you know, you know, we are playing with God and we're kind of in control when in actuality we should know we're not in control. Um, but I'm going to flip this. And for this part of it, let's say God is the piano repairman. And did you know that there's over 12,000 parts to a piano? 12,000. I mean, that's, that's a lot of pieces. I don't know whoever, you know, engineered that, whoever knows how to assemble it, the teams that assemble it. Let me tell you, my hat is off to you because 12,000, I, I can't even put together a 50 piece puzzle without getting frustrated. So my hat's off to you. So again, 12,000, sometimes even more, 12,000 parts to a piano. Now imagine that all those broken parts, those parts that are out of tune, those parts that may be worn down, those parts, um, you know, that are just, you know, they, they don't, they, they've seen better days. You know, imagine those parts are our sins, are our, our disappointments, our traumas, our hurts, etc. And, you know, in order for God to do what he needs to do in order for us to be able to become more like Jesus and release the gifts that he's instilled in us, he has to fix these parts. Um, he has to put them in order. He has to, you know, be able to tighten them, loosen them, remove them all together. And there are six major functions, six parts to a piano. It's the keyboard, the hammers, the dampers, the bridge, the soundboard, and the strings. And for, you know, for my music people out there, um, 
you know, for my pianist out there, if I got it wrong, just please have, <laughs> just please have a little mercy with me um, as I'm just trying to bring this story home. But yeah, again, there's those six parts. Now we could compare that, or I'm going to compare that to um, to our mind, the processes, you know, which processes thoughts, memories, emotions, and those things are woven together, you know, by our DNA and in through our soul and also, you know, part of our spirit. Now, the comparison may be unfair because there are only 88 keys on a piano. But for argument's sake, just work with me on this. Each key represents a gift that we are given by our Heavenly Father. But before he can, um, but, but before he can have that instilled gift released, he must have all these pieces in place. Everything has to be in place. You can't have, you know, the keys in place and the leg of the piano is missing. You know, you can't have, you know, the, um, the top of the piano missing. I don't know the name. Just again, bear with me. The top of the piano missing, um, or broken and, you know, expecting good notes to come out of it. You need that piano piece open. So that sound can flow when those hammers hit those strings. And, um, you know, again, he has to have all these things in place and, even though, you know, it seems like it's all about us. It seems like that we are the piano, that we are getting fixed. Um, There are many factors before God can release something through us that he's instilled in us. And, um, you know, all of those things are for his assignment. And, you know, those things that may need to be fixed, you know, it may involve it may involve a family member. It may involve a loved one, a friend, a spouse, a coworker, a complete stranger, or possibly, you know, even somebody you don't like that much. And, um, you know, again, God has lessons and he has ways that are not our ways. And, you know, he has to teach us and groom us and, you know, remove things and put things back in place. But, you know, God knows exactly what he's doing. And I thank him that he does because I've been trying to do this for a while and I know I've fumbled a lot, fumbled a lot of keys, if you will. And, um, you know, as he begins to repair us, as he starts putting all these pieces in together, we start getting in tune and our heart starts to sound more like Jesus heart. It starts to get softened and those notes that come out and those, you know, those vibrations from those keys you know, they, they, they start to sound heavenly to our ears. They start sounding heavenly um, also to God's ears because he takes joy and pleasure in us. And the more he begins to loosen, tighten, replace, now the Holy Spirit can start flowing through us and start creating things that weren't there before. You know, start playing those notes that sounded a little off and awkward when you first hit them. Now they sound amazing and you know again when the holy spirit starts flowing through you um you know it's it's more than magical magical is something that just comes and fades away that fire that burns from the holy spirit that does not fade the holy spirit i can tell you um from my own experience the holy spirit is ready to go at all times it's just we have to slow down and tap into him and then you know partner with him and and get things going the wonderfully beautiful thing about this repairman is that he's not concerned about the exterior of us he's not worried about the exterior of the piano because it's the interior workings of the piano that are able to make this music it's not so much the outside even though it does play a part but it's not so much the outside um, but the insides that turned this composition into audible masterpieces. And, you know, the housing of this piano may have some scratches and the the finish might not be as shiny as it once was, you know, a squeaky um, lid lid hinge and um, that foreboard that always seems to get stuck. But it doesn't matter. God is not concerned with those things. Those imperfections are a reflection of what you, the piano, have experienced through your through your lifetime, through its lifetime. Speaking of the piano, the fact that the piano is not in perfect, quote unquote, shape 
it may cause it to get overlooked. But maybe that's just God's plan. His perfect plan is to hide us until it's time, until the situation and the perfectly compatible pianist has arrived on our journey. And I hope that part makes sense because as a body of Christ, you know, we need to partner with one another um, in certain things. He, he called us not to be alone. You know, we have to partner with each other in prayer and worship and holding each other accountable in certain situations. Um, and, and that's, you know, again, that's that's important that we recognize that that we can't be on this journey alone. And he never intended us for, you know, for us to be on this journey alone. And, you know, this 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 little part here reminds me a bit of Isaiah 49 two, the verse that I actually build this podcast upon. And it says he made my mouth like a sharp sword and in the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow, and in his quiver, he hid me away. So again, sometimes those things that you may see as imperfections and other people see as imperfections, and it may be deterring to them. It may also deter you a little bit, but maybe God is just hiding you. He's hiding you in his hand for a perfect moment a perfect reason, a perfect season that he can release you out onto the world and let you be that light and let you be that salt. So I don't want you to be discouraged if you feel like you've been unnoticed or no one, nobody's acknowledging the strides you've made, the battles you've won and the things that you've overcome in the secret place. We should be more focused on that God knows all the things that we've been through because he's been there he's been there for every moment he's been there from the moment you know we were we were just a small little speck of dust a little molecule and he's watched us grow and and you know go through all the things we've gone through in our lifetime even things that we don't remember he remembers all the things about our life because he's that involved with us he knows everything and wants to know everything he wants to know about your experiences he wants to know about your feelings and and your upsets and and your things that bring you joy even though he knows he wants to know he wants to hear it from you and that's 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 key pun intended that's key that we we acknowledge that we have a god that's truly interested in us he's not just somebody that sits on a cloud and you know lets whatever happen happen he's a god that's involved he's a god that loves us he's a god that sent his only son jesus down here on earth to you know to teach us his laws and his ways and you know jesus sacrificed and was also obedient to the very end and even you know, at the very end, he was super obedient and, you know, he was he was crucified. And on three days, he rose again and he walked the earth. And even as he walked the earth, he was still giving. He was still loving. And the Holy Spirit is a gift that he left to us before he ascended back to heaven. And, um, you know, got a little off track there, but it's... Um, you know, God knows, God knows about everything we've gone through in a secret place. And the ultimate pianist is noticing those new keys are responding to his touch in a new way. And the methodical repairman stepping back and admiring the transformation of the piano that others gave up on. And, you know, that's, that's episode two. That's you know, keystrokes of a piano. I hope all of that made sense. I hope, you know, that it blessed you in some type of way, how it just put two pieces together and also flipped them on its head. Because this is the way, number one, that God wants to have a relationship with us. He wants to partner with us. And on the second side is how he wants to work in us and fix us and repair us. But again, this is a partnership. He, he can't go in there and fix something and we turn around and just break it. Like we want it, we need to want to have it fixed. We need to work to have it fixed. And, you know, again, this partnership, 
it doesn't come with any strings, more puns intended. It doesn't come with any strings attached. Um, the only string that is attached is the string that attaches to God's heart. And I hope, again, I hope this message blessed you. Um, I hope that you found it, you know, inspiring. I hope that, you know, you'll share it and like it. And I hope to see you again really soon for episode three of Pocket Pods. God bless you. I got the victory. I got the victory. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know. I got it. I feel joy. I feel peace. I feel happiness. I got the victory. Oh, Lord. I know. Hey. I got it. I feel alone in my hands. Oh, yeah. I feel alone. All over me Take one step at a time yeah. To be with you To be with you, yes And only you I'm willing to yeah. Take one step at a time To be with you I don't want nobody but you Oh Lord I got the victory I got it I know hey. I got it I feel it all in my hands I feel it all in my feet, all over me. Yeah. I, no way. I know, hey. I got it. Nothing like you, Lord. Nothing like you, Lord. Nobody, nobody's better than you. I got it. <laughs> I got it. I got it.